Hey, 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 welcome to episode 16. Yay! Episode 16. Of the uh, Ted and Lissa, Lissa and Ted show. <laughs> Today, we're going to be discussing the top five downsides mm. of being an entrepreneur. Are there really that many downsides? Five. <laughs> there are at least five downsides. There might be more. Mm -hmm. We might have a part two coming up in the future, but for the most part, being an entrepreneur is amazing. It, it, it's amazing. It, it let, lets you live your life with freedom. It lets you really follow your passion, do what you love, allows you to make more money than you know you can know what to do with, mm -hmm. allows you to work from home, allows you to work from the beach, allows you to follow your passion. Yeah, allows you to follow your passion and and, and others. And, and, and be in control of what you do every day, right? Mm -hmm. Like you get to choose what to do every day. No exactly. one's telling you what to do every day. That's crazy to think about. Right, today, told what to do every day. today I am working on pictures for the burger book. Bam. And that was my choice. No one told me I had to. That's just what I decided to right. do today. <laughs> so obviously there are a ton of, of, of benefits, but for every pro, there's a con. That's just how the universe works. Light, dark, up, down, fat, skinny healthy, sick, live, dead, you know, right? Mm -hmm. And so pros of being an entrepreneur is also cons. So we're talking about some of the cons today and give everyone just a heads up <laughs> of uh, what to expect. And maybe a lot of these things are very relatable with a lot of people as well. So just know you're not alone if you're experiencing these things. Um, so let's start with the first one. The first ones, and these are no order by the way, but these are just in the order that we thought of them for the show. First one. Is being an entrepreneur, let's say you want to take out like, let's say you've been an entrepreneur for a year or two. And let's say you're making 10K a month. Let's say you're doing $120,000 a year. So you go to the bank and you're like, hey, bank, I've been making $120,000 a year. Can I get a loan for like a you know, million or $2 million home? Bank's going to be like, no. Mm -hmm. like, Why not? And they're going to be like, well, because you're an entrepreneur. We don't want to give you a loan. What if your business fails? Right, so banks don't like it when you're an entre when you're a new entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and you don't have much history to show. So it's hard to get a loan. It's yeah, a loan. it's actually interesting. I have a story about that too. It's hard to even rent a place because when I my ex and I split up, I had to move out, and I was only raw for maybe sixteen months, maybe a year and a half, give or around there. And so I had only been selling my ebook for probably six months or so and or less probably only four months and i had my own photography business so i was already self-employed at the time and i had to find a place to live and the place that i went to they were like super hesitant to rent me the apartment and they said okay well the only way that we will do it is if you pay your damage deposit and the first three months up front. And it was like, I don't know, probably around $6,000 uh -huh. right away. Right. That's, I, why, and that's, it why was, that's why you couldn't go to Woodstock. Exactly. Yeah. I, I had no money. I had spent it all trying to start my life fresh. And then, you know, I had to buy a bed and all of the new stuff that I needed for my new life. And I was just, I'd used all my savings up, but that's just a small story about how it's really difficult. If you don't have the track record, you don't have yeah. like your W2 that your company gives you, you yeah. file your taxes every year that shows how much your income is and everything. It's harder as an entrepreneur. Sure. So <laughs> if someone wants to get a loan as an entrepreneur, sometimes it might be smart to go get a job and do the entrepreneurship thing on the side. Like if you really want like a loan for like a million dollar, $2 million home or something, if you're an entrepreneur, maybe go get a job for you know six months to a year or something. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily for the income, but so you can get that loan money, right? Or if you do have a job right now and you want to become an entrepreneur, don't, maybe don't quit your day job just yet. Use it to get that loan if you want that loan. Uh, put it to, put that bank's money to work and then, and then go become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So. And then once you've been an entrepreneur for like three, five, six, seven, eight years, then it, you have a track record, right? But like you said, it's the new entrepreneurs who 
you know, it's the banks are, they, they're trying to protect themselves yeah, too, right? They don't know what your income is going to be like in the next six mm -hmm. months or if you're going to default on your loan or whatever yeah. they're protecting. So. so that's definitely one downside. The second downside of being an entrepreneur is that people think like, oh, being your own boss, it's great. But what they don't realize is that you have to also be your own employee. Mm -hmm. That's the downside. It's like, it's nice being like the visionary. Here's what I want to create. And here's why I want to create it. And these are the kind of lives I want to change. And this is the kind of impact I want to make. But okay, now you have to actually go do the work. Now you have to go <laughs> dig the holes, click the buttons, talk to the people, make the mistakes, put your face out there, mm -hmm. sit and stare in front of a screen for eight hours a day. Like you have to actually be an employee. Mm -hmm. right? And that's something people really don't realize they have to do. Mm -hmm. Or not scheduling it in too, right? Like actually setting times to do certain things and mm -hmm. actually get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when, when you um, say you're going to do something and you don't do it, you start to lose trust in yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you have a nine to five, okay, you just show up at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Show up, just show up, just show up, just show up. You keep patting yourself on the back. Hey, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. But if you tell yourself, okay, tomorrow I'm going to make that ebook, and then tomorrow you wake up and you don't do it, you just lost some points with yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. So. And it's, it's hard. Like when I first, because I, I did the nine to five thing until probably around 2013, give or take. And then I quit to be my own boss in photography. So I was a full time photographer, professional. And I thought that it was going to be amazing. I was like, I get to be home. I can make my lunch. I can do this. I could go for a walk. You go to the gym. And it's like, no, like, yes, you are home. And yes, you would have to schedule to go into the gym. Like, it's not just like you can just wake up and do whatever. Like you have to schedule stuff. And I realized that it doesn't matter if you work from home, if you work for yourself, or if you work a nine to five, you still have to make your lunch. You still have to make dinner after work and it's still going to be hard because you're tired because you've worked all day. Right. So yeah. I know a lot of people will say, Oh, Alyssa, it's so easy for you because you're home all day and you, you know, this is your job. Yeah, and I'm right. like, I still don't want to make lunch. <laughs> right. Or after a long day of like taking pictures all day for my new ebook, it's like, I don't want to make dinner. That's, I do. That's but I don't want to. That's another like mini downside is like people don't really have any sympathy for you. <laughs> like, oh, you worked all day. You've been at home. You've probably just been on Instagram all day. What are you doing? Right. You right. Your phone. They don't realize that like you've been, your brain's been like working mm -hmm. so hard all day mm -hmm. in the same way that someone's working hard at, a, at an office job. You know, mm -hmm. you just happen to be working hard at what you love, but you're still working hard. It still, yeah. it still drains you. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a big one. That's a big one. And then that brings us to our next downside, which is being an entrepreneur, at least the way we do it on online, it requires a lot of social media use, mm -hmm. a lot of social media use. And we know from scientific studies that social media use, if you use it purely, you know, for consumption purposes, is not healthy for your brain at all. Like it exactly. actually fries your brain, like in a really bad way. So being on social media all the time is kind of risky. It's not necessarily bad, but it's risky the way we do it because we put ourselves at risk for like seeing things that we don't necessarily want to see. So we have to just be really, really diligent going on social media, doing your posts, replying to your DMs and getting off. Mm -hmm. you know, not just sitting there and just scrolling and seeing what everyone else is doing. <laughs> that just completely fries your brain and makes you a horrible entrepreneur. So yeah. definitely much more social media use than the average person if you're using it to make sales mm -hmm. organically. Right? If you're running ads, it's different. You can be all over social media without having to actually be on social media. But um, the methods we use, a lot of it's organic. It requires us to do comments and DMs and does require us to scroll a bit and, and you know, find pages and respond. Mm -hmm. So that can be, if you're not using it properly, semi-detrimental. Which is yeah. why we like set those timers, right? Set 20 minute timer and go for it. Do your thing, boom, 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 a speed run, get off. Mm -hmm. And then if you're trying to work on something else to put your phone in another room, oh, like yeah. plug it in, charge it in a different room. So like you're working on your laptop and you're that's like, that's a must. Mm -hmm. That is a must. That, yeah. That's the other downside is you not just social media downside, but just the addiction to the phone checking 
the incessant mm. checking. Mm -hmm. I did a dopamine fast a couple months ago and I, I was think, sitting on my carpet here thinking, I'm like, why am I so happy? Like, why am I so happy? What's different? What's actually different during this dopamine fast? And I'm like, there's no incessant checking of mm -hmm. new information. Like I'm not checking a text or I'm not checking YouTube comments or checking Instagram or email or, or Slack or, or the updates on Bitcoin or anything. There's no like new shit constantly flashing in my brain throughout the day. Exactly. It's just ah, nothing. <laughs> and so when you were working, it's, it's, it's very important to have that just space of just pure work, deep work mm -hmm. mode, and then go and check the phone like at a certain time of the day. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wow. Scheduling it in planning and scheduling are seriously the keys to success in anything in life. If you can schedule something, do it, and yeah. be consistent with it. Hundred percent. That's exactly the consistency is the habit. Mm -hmm. Planning it the night before in your book, waking up and doing it. That's it. That's the key to success. Like the number one habit, the number one master habit for entrepreneurs is planning what they got to do the next day, waking up and actually doing it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Plan, right? do it. And the coolest thing is, if you do like one thing every day for you to further your business, like say you still have a nine to five job or whatever. If you just did one thing every day and you did it first thing in the morning, then you you're done for the day. Yep. Right. You can just get, get it done and move on and you don't have to feel stressed. Like you didn't do it in the morning and then you go to your work and then you have to make dinner and then you're like, Oh, I'm so tired from the day, but I still have to do that thing. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. And then it just, it's tomorrow is all, is an illusion. Like it, it, tomorrow never comes until you, take action on it. Yep. Yeah. And it's, and it's the, the scary thing about habits is how quickly they can actually be mm. adopted. And the minute you do something, it, it starts to form a habit. Like if you do something once, it starts to form a habit. And if you say, I'll do it tomorrow, boom, that becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. so then tomorrow comes, it's like 10 times easier to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Or I'll just do it later. Maybe not even tomorrow, just I'll do it later. I'll do it when I feel like it. Yeah. That becomes a habit, you know? Mm -hmm. Instead of actually doing it, it's like, oh, I'll do it when I feel like it. And just that becomes a habit. So not doing things becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. I, I was working with a friend the other day and he came into my house and he saw I made some changes in the basement. And he's like, he's like, man, you're a doer, eh? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you say you're going to do something and you do it. I'm like, oh, I guess I never really thought of that. Of course I'm going to do it. Like I want to do this thing. And, and he realized like, yeah, like a lot of people just don't do shit. Mm -hmm. They say they're going to do something or they say they want to do something, but they don't, don't actually do it. And the cool thing about the Academy is that like we offer space for people to do it with us. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. They just have to show up. They don't even need to think about doing it. Just show up. And just by showing up, you get to do the stuff with some cool people. So. Yeah, and it creates the habit. One of my favorite quotes is, today is the tomorrow that you said yesterday. Boom. Today is the tomorrow you said yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, right. no better time than today. That's for sure. And Emerson's got this powerful quote. And he's like, do the thing and you'll have the energy to do the thing. Because mm, there's so many people that just put it up, put it out, have energy for it, have energy for it. Once you start doing it, you got it. I remember this. I had to mow my lawn all the time growing up. And I was like, I didn't, really didn't want to mow the lawn. I hated mowing the lawn until I started mowing the lawn. Once I started mowing the lawn, I'm like, I love this. This is great. <laughs> like, I love mowing the lawn. But when I had to go mow the lawn, I was like, oh, this sucks. Like, I don't want to have to go. I don't have to go mow the lawn. Mm -hmm. Once I was doing it, it was great. Same with swimming. Just sw swimming in a pool. I hated going to the pool, getting undressed, and getting, like, going from dry to wet. That was my least favorite thing ever. I hated that one second of jumping in and going from dry to wet. Hated it. Still hate it to this day. Still hate the idea of going to the gym and parking my car and getting undressed to go swimming. I hate that. But when I'm swimming, I love it. Mm -hmm. right? So it's like I'm, when I'm doing the thing, I have the energy to do the thing. So that's like, that's like the thing with making ebooks and, and, and making sales, right? And launching programs and creating any content. Like there's lots of times where I don't feel like making content, right? But I do it. As soon as I do it, I'm like, this is great. Mm -hmm. So just overcoming that little hurdle. 
that, yeah. that launch, that launch effort. Is, yeah. Um, something that helps me is to tell myself that like to think of how I'll feel after. Mm. So I remember when we did the retreat, I had made a, like a goals of what would I regret if I didn't do at the retreat? Like, so I put myself after like driving home from the retreat and I'm like, what would I regret not doing or doing? Right. And one of the things that I really would have regretted was not getting enough slow-mo to make a promo video. All right. So I was like, that is something that I would regret yes. and I don't want to regret it. So I'm going to do it. That's a good and, one. Yeah. I always think of the question. after. That's an interesting question. We might even use that on our, uh, on our phone script. <laughs> what do you think you might regret if you don't do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Right. Or I'll also think of like, how am I going to feel once those pictures are done or once mm -hmm. I've, entered all the page numbers in my ebook. I'm thinking right now ebook because that's what I've been working on like nonstop. But like some of the burgers, I'll like look at the list. I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna make that one. I gotta make that one. And I'm like, just do it. Cause you're gonna feel so good after. And I was, well, I did. Is, exactly. This is what it means to like be in the employee mode. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I gotta do what I said I gotta do. Like an I being the boss, you know? Yeah. When you plan the burger book, I'm sure you were super excited to plan the burger book, right? You're like, oh, oh no, man. This, this, that's boss mode, right? That's yep. boss mode. That's pretty easy. It's easy to be boss mode. It's easy to be the visionary. But then to actually do the freaking work, that's like the employee work. It's actually like more respectable than the boss work. Mm. Like it's actually more respectable. You have to actually do that stuff. Yeah. You're the one that the employee is the one that creates it in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's one thing to think it and to imagine it and to think it would be awesome. It's another thing to actually put the work in and get it done. It's like a, it's like the, you know, basketball coach and then the players, the coach mm -hmm. like plans out the plays. All right, here's what we're going to, we're going to go there and there and there and there and you shoot the ball there and the team has to actually go and do it. But without this awesome plan of the coach, the team would lose because they wouldn't have a plan. They'd just be like, pass here, pass there, shoot here. They'd lose like the best teams are the best coaches you know, mm -hmm. but they also have the best players. So it's like, they're so synergistic. They have to be totally synergistic. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's really good uh, Netflix series on YouTube, but Michael Jordan, the best basketball player of all time, arguably, well, pretty evident, but arguably the best basketball <laughs> player of all time. It's called The Last Dance. Great series, by the way. I watched it to get inspired for entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Didn't make me want to go play basketball. It made me want to be a better entrepreneur. Yeah. Because the way the coach worked together with Michael and vice versa, very, very, so much synergy. And like, that's you going to bed at night, mapping out tomorrow. That's you being the coach. That's you being the boss. And then waking up and actually shooting those shots. That's Michael Jordan just putting in the work, you mm -hmm. know? And it's not, not always pretty. It's not always pretty. And that actually brings us to our next point. Like, you can be consistent with waking up and, and getting stuff done for sure. And that's like a must. You must be consistent with that. But you can control that consistency. What you can't control always is the market. Like mm -hmm. there's some, there can be some swings in the market where it's like some months you have like 30K months, other months you have like 90K months, other months you have like 10K months. Like the, there can be huge swings in the market that are like out of your control, like COVID, for example, mm -hmm. right? Or tax season, for example, or whatever. Maybe your ad account gets shut down. And then instead of doing like 40K a month consistently, now you're down to like 10K a month because you have no ads running, right? So just things can, things can be out of your control. Um, and so that's one of the downsides of being an entrepreneur is like, and that's why the banks might not want to give you a loan because just the consistency is just not there. Yeah. Um, and so when you're getting a paycheck nine to five, it's like, well, you're getting a salary. It's like, okay, here's a $100,000 a year job. I'm getting paid whatever. 8k a month or something every month you're going to get that no matter what mm -hmm. you know whether you show up you know half drunk or half stoned you're still going to get paid the same amount but as an entrepreneur it's until like until they fire you right until they, fire, <laughs> until they find out and fire you but it's like as an entrepreneur you have to be like razor sharp mentally mm -hmm. clear and uh your mind is 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 the motor really um but even then it's like you can't predict your income at the mm -hmm. end of the month, like you can aim for it and you can have systems in place that will, you know, statistically speaking, generate a certain amount of money, but certain things come up, you know, mm -hmm. certain things come up. Um, 
And typically when you first start though, the good thing is when you're first starting out as an entrepreneur, it, it's not consistent at all, but it's going up, 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 up. Yeah. It's like first month, 5K, wow. Next month, 10K, wow. Next month, 15K, wow. I'm unstoppable. Then 20K, then 25K, then 30K. You're like, oh my God, I can make as much money as I bloody well want, right? It just goes up and up and up. And then it, you start to plateau maybe and then go up again and then maybe down. So it's, it really is all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but having hit those highs at one point, you know what's possible, right? You know you can get back there. You just got to get all your ducks in a row, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and make that happen. So consistency is definitely not there. Um, in fact, I don't even know if we've ever had like back to back months that were the same. Like mm. our month, our months in the Academy go up and down by like 10, 20 K mm -hmm. you know, month over month. The big swings. Yeah. Big swings. But that's when you're saying high ticket, that's to be expected. Yeah, for sure. A couple sales is like you know, 10K or something. So definitely to be expected. Um, and then another thing, you, you know, that another, or I guess one of the reasons why we don't do refunds and the reason why we don't recommend other people to refunds, like you don't do refunds on your books, right? No. no, only in very, 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 very strict circumstances. One of the main times I will ever do a refund is if somebody double purchased, mm -hmm. like they, they bought it and then they bought it again, or if they bought it and they forgot to use the coupon code, then we'll do a refund if they sure. rebuy it again. But they're very, 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 very specific cases. Otherwise digital products, because they can be downloaded and then used and then got a refund. I have a strict no refund policy on digital products because mm -hmm. Again, I've been burned far too many times in the past that I've had to implement it. Like, yeah, I, I've known people who've downloaded the book, gotten the refund, and then I find out later that they've shared it with friends. And, right. and it just, it hurts because I put a lot of work and a lot of time and I help people for free online. And it's just, it, it kind of sucks when you have to end up doing a refund. And yeah, yeah. it makes sense, obviously, yeah. if someone double purchases or if someone mm -hmm. has a coupon code. That makes sense. Or if like, or if you said the burger book has 50 recipes and they buy it and there's like, you know, 30 recipes and you straight up lied to them and you didn't deliver what you said you're gonna deliver. Sure, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. But if, if you deliver what you say you're gonna deliver, it's clearly printed and you clearly state no refunds. Mm -hmm. It's another story. If you didn't say no refunds, okay, well maybe it's up for debate, but you clearly state no refunds. And so when people sign up for the Academy, it's the same thing. It's straight up says in the, in the agreement under no circumstances, do we offer refunds? Mm -hmm. But that same reason, as soon as they're in, they have access to everything. They could easily download it all, share it. They have it for life. Basically all, all the info, all the recordings of all our calls, we can't offer refunds. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think of a circumstance where we would offer a refund. Oh, we would offer a refund if someone signs up. And let's say they sign up for our, you know, a six month term or something, but then we have to close the academy down because we're mm -hmm. we quit. We go become monks in the Himalayas and we don't deliver them what we said we're going to deliver. Then we'll refund. Sure. Yeah. But as long as we're here, as long as we're here, there's no reason to offer a refund. It's funny because we do get refund requests. We have to turn them down every time though, because every time someone asks for a refund, they say something like, Oh, like, can you just make this one exception in this case? And it's generally the people who generally the people who ask for refunds, are the people who don't even show up. Like mm -hmm. they haven't shown up for, for weeks or months. We've like never even heard from them. Um, and they, they're just, they just want their money because they need money, mm -hmm. right? They're like, oh, I need, some, I need some money right now. I need, I'll need to buy a car or I have rentals I gotta do. Where can I get some money? Where can I get some money? Oh, I know, I'll ask for a refund so I can get that money back. Mm -hmm. But like, that's not how it works. We can't do that because of the, because of the lack of consistency as it is, right? Mm -hmm. And when we make a sale, we, we pay out people, we pay out, you know, for our software, we pay out for commissions, we pay out for admin fees, we pay out for our time. Our ads. Yeah, ads. It takes up, yeah, other students' time that they've mm -hmm. paid for. It's just, there's no way you can offer refunds. And, and plus, I mean, you, you could offer refunds, but there's no point because when someone signs up for something, if there's no commitment, it's like marriage. Like getting married, it costs money, right? 
And then getting divorced costs money. Because if it didn't cost money to get divorced, people would just get divorced like that. Fuck it, I'm out. That's like boyfriend girlfriend shit. Marriage is different. This is signing up for the academy, or, or in your case, signing, even purchasing your ebook. It's like a marriage. You, you're buying into it. You're committing to it, mm-hmm. right? And for a business like ours, Course Creator Academy, this is a commitment, right? Mm-hmm. You're going all in. We're going all in with you. Right? We go all in with our students. We expect them, we need them to come all in with us as well. Mm-hmm. Otherwise it won't work. I think a lot of um, like gym equipment and even gym memberships, it's kind of that same idea. Like a lot of people who are currently creating courses who are eventually going to sell their courses know that they're going to have people who buy their courses who don't do anything with them. It's just like the gym equipment or getting a gym membership or There's whatever. No for that, right? No refunds. No. Once you sign your gym membership, you yeah. can't get refunds. No. It's like you have to go to the gym to yeah. use it. You can't ask for refunds. No. You have to cancel where you were, but you don't get, and you have to even pay a penalty in some gyms. Like if you cancel yeah. before your contract, you have to pay like $300 fee or something right. like that. Right. Because that's just how it is. But even if you buy a piece of gym equipment and it sits in your basement for months and suddenly you're like, oh, well, I don't really want this anymore. You can't really take it back unless the store has a return policy, but you're normally going to sell it on Greg's list for like $200 because you just, you can't get that value back. It's like once you buy the product, like you said, you have to commit and go and And be part of it and learn. Totally. And and the other thing is like, especially when people ask for refunds after like months of like not even showing up, it's different if you sign up and then with 24 hours later, you're like, Hey, I made a mistake. I need the money back. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a very different kind of conversation and different, different situation. Maybe you were drunk or high or something and whatever you made it quick, quick 24 hour mistake or 12 hour mistake, whatever. But like months later, like that money, you need to understand that money's already spent. Mm-hmm. It's not like we carry like a stockpile of money in case, every single person refunds, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have any capital to work with. Right. So when, when we make a sale, that money immediately goes towards buying stuff, right? Buying ads and putting it back into business and paying people. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't towards making the program better for everyone. Like it's, it's spent. Mm-hmm. And so it'd be different if we had like a, again, like a stockpile, like a three month stockpile, you know, <laughs> right. like everyone's money. We didn't spend anything, but we don't have that. So, yeah. Um, or if somebody was to do like, say a two week or 14 day trial or something, yeah, then we'd hold you, the money for 14 days. you hold the money for that period yeah. of time. And then once that time's up, there's no refunds after because then that money. 100%. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've had a couple people come into the Academy actually, where we create a custom contract for them. Mm. And on that custom contract, it says, cause normally it says there's no refunds under any circumstance. But for a couple of people, we've, we've, we've changed that contract that they've signed that said um, we will honor a 24-hour refund policy, 24-hour refund period. So they can come in, check it out uh, with our guidance, like we're on Zoom with them, just, just so they know it's super legit. And these are like with doctors. These are like with like yeah. uh, full paying people, no one on payment plans or anything like that. Um, and then in those instances, if they refund from 24 hours, cool, it's on the contract. But we don't spend the money within 12 hours. We keep the money because we know, hey, we might have to give this back. Mm-hmm. But for everyone else, when they sign the no refund, okay, that money we can now spend. Mm-hmm. So, and it's, it's very wise, like I said, not to offer refunds because if you do, you give people the incentive to just like flake, you know? Mm-hmm. And you don't want that kind of culture inside of your program. Yeah, you want commitment. You, mm-hmm. want, you want the people to actually follow the step-by-step stuff that you have to offer. And if they bought in they're they really want that end result. So. And, and again, this would be a different kind of conversation. If someone signs up, they work with you and they realize that you suck. They realize that you don't know anything about what you're doing. Right. And they have evidence of that. Um, and that's the other point too, is like, it's important to click, keep evidence of everything too. So when someone does sign up, you have evidence of the contract. You have evidence of their Zoom calls. You have evidence of their activity in the Facebook. You have evidence of, of a phone call. You have evidence of all the emails exchanged. You have evidence of, of time invested. And, and you have evidence of their progress that they made in the course. But we can track all that. 
Um, so giving evidence is, is key, but um, it, it's yeah, it's just so important to make sure that you have that commitment type of culture in your in your program in your offer. When people sign up, they know that they're except they're like married to this now. You know, there's no there's no there's no being up. Um, but yeah, again, again, it comes down to different kind of conversation if they realize that you suck. And so, yeah. like, if you're not delivering on what you said you were going to deliver, if you said you were going to be there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you're not, okay, then there's room yeah. for discussion about a refund, considering mm -hmm. you didn't deliver on the goods. Exactly, yeah. But if, if you delivered and I just didn't show up, yeah, I'm not going to ask for a refund. That's crazy. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, I think those are just, those are, those are some of the main downsides to recap. We got banks don't really want to give you a loan. Even renting a house can be difficult. That's, that's tough. Um, you have to actually be your own employee as well. It's not mm -hmm. just being your own boss. You've got to spend ample amount of time on social media, at least initially to get the, get it down pat. And then you can defer it, delegate it off to a, you know, a friend or a team member or not a friend, but a team member. Um, <laughs> And then the consistency factor is not really there. It's kind of up and down. Hopefully it's up and down, but on the way up like a stock. Yes. Um, and then you got, you know, people asking for refunds here and there, which um, is always a, a bummer as well. And there's just no avoiding that. It's just, it's just statistically bound to happen in every single company in the world, whether mm -hmm. it's Apple or Microsoft or freaking Shell gas station. I'm sure if you want a refund on the gas, like, I'm sure people ask for refunds of all sorts of kinds. I'm sure people tried to refund on Bitcoin. Oh, probably. I'm sure people bought a stock, you know, after the stock market and said, I want a refund on my stock. <laughs> you know, or I'm not, there's funny videos on YouTube of people going and trying to return used condoms. Oh, what? <laughs> they, they go in there with this box of used condoms. They say they want a refund. Um, so wow. there's all, all takes all types of people, but uh, you just have to have a, from, from policies in place. And, and for each of these downsides, there are ways around them, right? So for the loan, you can go get a job. Mm -hmm. For the being your own employee, well, you can, you can make a game out of it and have fun with it. You know, put in your favorite music and get to work. Um, or come to the work tanks. Come to the work tanks, we do work together, exactly. Thank you, we work together. And when it comes to social media, it helps if you just delegate out to a team or use later to, to schedule all your posts for you. Um, and then, or just use a timer. So timer, go on there 20 minutes, get it done. With the consistency, well, you can just master your own consistency. And by you being consistent, generally speaking, your income is gonna be pretty consistent as well. Another side tip on the consistency is to have the buffer, like your backup cash for months that are lower. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, sure. that helps too. And then for the refunds, you just need to make it blatantly obvious that there are no refunds and uh, when people sign up for your program, do what you can to help them out, help them get results. Nobody, yeah, nobody is going to really refund when they're getting results. So, mm -hmm. so anyways, cool talk, Lisa. Any yes. final words? No, this was a good one. I enjoyed talking about this because cool. even though it's, like you said, it's like this glamorous idea of self-employment and you're an entrepreneur and everything, there are still downsides. Yeah. So it was good to talk about that. Be transparent with with it definitely and i'm sure i'm sure there are more downsides because except for every pro there's a there's a con but these are just the five that we thought of right before the call and uh five that we've had a lot of experience with mm -hmm. so that's that lissa awesome thank you so much you're welcome i'm looking forward to your burger book very much oh i know i'm gonna get back to editing <laughs> i'm gonna be editing all night that's for sure wow I'm, i want to uh, i want to be the top bundle seller <laughs> All right, be, bro. I want to be responsible I'm gonna be, for people getting that, that burger book. Right. I'm going to be um, keeping track of the top five sellers in every, like we're going to send out daily emails. Sweet. Be like, who's, who's, who's in the top yeah. five? Sweet. Get your butt going. How start. many sellers are there? Can you only sell it if you're in the bundle? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to come up with some clever ways of uh, marketing it. Yeah. And the thing is, from my experience with the bundles, the more you market it, the better. Oh, like, that's with anything. Like, yeah, with anything. To, we need a whole another Zoom call on that. Because like, I see people, they're like, Ted, like, only got like 12 people signed up for my webinar. I've, I've, and I've promoted like at least a couple times. 
I'm like, what? You have to promote that like five times a day, every single day. You have to be annoying. I remember in the last bundle, they had made a comment because they're like, wow, Alyssa, you're like really on point with the promoting. And I'm like, my goal is to be annoying. And they're like, has anyone said anything yet? I'm like, actually, no. So my job is not done. <laughs> oh, I, I got some ideas already. I'm so <laughs> Sweet. I got the coolest ideas. thing is um, for those who are like the secret, super secret, but the bundle's being released April 1st. So we're doing, fun. we want to do like a, an April Fool's joke, but it's not yeah. a joke. We're going to be like, guess what? This isn't an April Fool's joke, but you're gonna get all this for fifty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna do a webinar on it. I'm gonna get people into a webinar and sell on a webinar. Oh, sweet. I need oh, I need man. a list of all the people who are in that so I can start promoting it though. Yeah, we're gonna send all that stuff out soon. I just have to get the book done and then I'm gonna be working on the website. Cool. With okay, everybody so and all of their content. So yeah. That's gonna be sweet. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I over deliver to inside the bundle. I'm gonna give you guys like a ton of shit. Ah, oh, you're I'll awesome. You, I'll give you guys multiple courses and ebooks. I'll give you all my ebooks and all my courses. Except, <laughs> except first grade academy. That's awesome. I'll That's awesome. Load it in there. Cool. All right. Well, in book you could put in there too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I'll even put my original clean and simple rest of the ebook. <laughs> sweet. Oh man, right. it's gonna be gold. Cool, cool. Well, uh, take care. Much love. Peace out and have a good one. All right. Have a great Wednesday call. <laughs> Bye.